Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the hand of Moses, your servant, you led your people out of slavery and made them free at last. Grant that your church, following the example of your prophet, Martin Luther King, may resist oppression in the name of your love and may secure for all your children the blessed liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. 
Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because that I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Omnipotent God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in our world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Good morning and blessings on another day of celebration of the life and the work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And praise God for the Magi and their visit and the baptism of Jesus as we move through the season of Epiphany. John's Gospel today informs us that Jesus found Philip and said to him, follow me. Then Philip found Nathanael and told him, come and see. And that was an invitation to Nathanael to follow Philip. Come and see for yourself the fulfilling of the law and the prophets. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and declared of him, here is truly an Israelite in which there is no deceit. My siblings in Christ, Martin Luther King Jr. found Rosa Parks and said to her, come with me, come with me. Let us join together with other Negroes and let us begin our journey. When Rosa Parks refused to get out of her seat and move to the back of the bus, 
It was an invitation to all of America to come to Montgomery, Alabama and see the humiliating racist life of the American descendants of African slaves. The United States of America and soon the world learned that the Reverend Dr. King was a follower of Jesus Christ and King was a man in whom there was no deceit. When Jesus called King, he was a senior at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. And his answer was as Samuel's, speak for your servant is listening. Where do we go from here, chaos or community? Was Dr. King's final book completed shortly before his death in 1968. Dr. King analyzed the state of American race relations and the civil rights movement after a decade of struggle. In the foreword, his wife, Coretta Scott King, writes that the book is remarkably contemporary. Unfortunately, 53 years later, the book still seems contemporary. That ought to terrify any descendant of African slaves, and it ought to elicit fear in the lives of the other tribes, white, Asian, Latinx, Native American, and any other tribe of people living in America. Mrs. King ended the foreword stating, the glowing spirit and the sharp insights of Martin Luther King Jr. are embodied in this book. The solutions he offered can still save our society from self-destruction. I hope that it will be seen as testament and that the grief that followed his death will be transmuted to a universal determination to realize the economic and social justice for which he so willingly gave his life. The title and the contents of the final King book, Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community? Offer solutions that we need and 53 years have flown right by us. We have almost missed our opportunity to choose since we have begun the descent into chaos. On January 6, 2021, a mob of Trump supporters visited murder, mayhem, violence, and chaos in the nation's Capitol building to stop the 117th Congress from accepting and confirming the electoral college votes that would confirm Joseph Biden as the next president of the United States. The work before us is challenging because white Americans will have to confess that their tribe is responsible for the divisions in our country by creating and embracing the heinous institution of slavery. My African ancestors did not emigrate from anywhere. My African ancestors were bought, whipped, chained, and shipped to American shores. My ancestors were cargo, not immigrants. The whole dirty business of slavery was based on the premise that the African man, woman, and child was a thing to be used, not a person. No other ethnic group in America has been a slave on American soil. In this year, 2021, it wouldn't be neither true nor honest to say that the black American status is what it is because he is racially inferior, innately so, basically lazy, or refuses to lift himself up by his bootstraps. There are 104 HBCUs, or 
historically black colleges and universities in 19 of the United States, the District of Columbia and the Virgin Islands. Two of these colleges and universities, two of these HBCUs are Episcopalian. St. Augustine in Raleigh, North Carolina and Voorhees in Denmark, South Carolina. The nation elected Barack Obama as president and he graduated from Columbia University and Harvard Law School. His wife, Michelle Obama, graduated with honors from Princeton University and Harvard Law School. My friends, the American descendants of African slaves understands the concept of bootstraps. Do you understand that if black Americans are rejected because of the color of our skin, we must face the anguishing truth daily that we are being rejected because of something that cannot be changed. The basis, this basis for rejection is a despicable expression of man's inhumanity to man. However, white America must act upon the words of the Muslim civil rights activist, Malcolm X, who said this, that is not a chip on my shoulder. That is your foot on my neck. Every American must admit and accept that racial understanding is not something we find, but something we must create. Then, together, we can begin the arduous, onerous, demanding work of changing the American descendants of African slaves from cargo into human beings. The results will be satisfying, gratifying, edifying, informative, and beneficial to the United States of America, as well as to the rest of this world. I wish I could hear you saying amen. Dr. King's most direct words to white Americans were these. Negroes hold only one key to the double lock of peaceful change. The other is in the hands of the white community. King continues, what is needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive. And love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. Justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. In John's gospel, chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. In the baptismal covenant, covenant you were asked, Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And you answered, I will with God's help. You accepted the commandment and you made the promise. In Washington Irving's familiar story of Rip Van Winkle, we usually recall that Rip Van Winkle slept for 20 years. When he went up the mountain to sleep, the ruler of the United States was King George III. And when he returned, George Washington was the president of the United States of America. The most important issue is not that Rip Van Winkle slept for 20 years, but that he slept through a revolution that would alter the course of human history. My siblings, 
we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, have work to do. The only answer to the question posed in the title of Dr. King's book, Chaos or Community, is that we need to build the beloved community. All of humankind is interdependent. Truly, all of life is interrelated. The agony of the poor impoverishes the rich. The improvement of the poor enriches the rich. Assuredly, my friends, we are our siblings keeper because we are our siblings' sibling. Whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. Dr. King wrote 53 years ago this, quote, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now, unquote. In this conundrum of life and history, can there be such a thing as too late? Isn't the thief of time still called procrastination? That invisible book of life most faithfully records our vigilance or our neglect. So I ask you, my brothers and my sisters, what are you going to do? What is the work you will give yourself to do? I admit to you, I'm just a bit afraid, just a little bit afraid of what you will do, but I'm terrified about what you will not do. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for the privilege of fellowship with you. Help us to discover ourselves, to discover our neighbors, and to discover you and to make you a part of our everyday living. Grant that we will go forward with bold determination and bold action, seeking truth, justice, and peace. In the name and the spirit of Jesus, our Christ and our brother, accept our prayers. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty. Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we gather for worship this morning, we bring with us the day's cares and concerns. 
I now invite you to offer to God those things which give joy to or burden your heart. For whom shall we pray? We pray for all those suffering from COVID-19, especially Reed and Cindy and Justin. We pray for all the sick of this parish. We pray for our bishops, John and Diane, and for Melissa, canon to the ordinary. We pray for our nation, especially for our president-elect and all those who hold public office. We pray for our vice president-elect. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters in Christ be strengthened by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts so that our lives will reflect your holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have called us to be a light to the world so that those in darkness come to you. May our lives shine as witness to the saving grace you have given for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have called us members of the body of Christ. So when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lit with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone and welcome to St. John's Cathedral on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day weekend. We're pleased that you have joined us for worship this morning, and especially if you are the first time, if this is your first time with us, you are our honored guest today. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us here digitally this morning. Today also is the beginning of our celebration of Black History Month here at St. John's. Uh, the vestments that we're wearing today, the stoles, uh, are a gift in honor of Canon Earl Munger's ministry here at St. John's, and we give thanks for Earl and for his many years of ministry here. We also will conclude our celebration of Black History Month with the celebration of the Feast of Absalom Jones, and that's going to be a little earlier than the actual feast day on February the 7th and we're going to have the Reverend Jordan Kaysen, rector of St. Michael's Church in Yerdon, PA, as our um, guest preacher on that day. Uh, not to be missed, Jordan is a fabulous, uh, young, dynamic preacher, and we'll be very glad to have him with us digitally on our celebration of Absalom Jones. The annual meeting of this congregation will take place on Sunday, January the 31st, from 12 to 1 p.m., and all those who are uh, pledging members in good standing of St. John's are invited to be part of that Zoom call. Uh, that's the way we're going to have to do our annual meeting this year. Uh, so we are going to do it over Zoom, and you will receive a link to that meeting. We encourage you, please, to participate digitally for the annual meeting this year when we will uh, go through our uh, financial um, uh, commitments from the, from the year before and look at our budget for 2021 and also um, officially elect our vestry members for the new year. Christian formation classes uh, for the basic Christian formation have started this week, started yesterday, but it's still not too late to sign up if you would like to be part of that course where we are going to examine sort of the foundations of Christianity and help you in terms of preparation for baptism or confirmation, or if you just want a new start in your Christian life. That is Saturday mornings at uh, 10 a.m., and we invite you to write to the church office via email or to me via email uh, for more information about that. And also our 
Sunday morning Christian education classes at 9.30, now looking at the Gospel of St. Mark. I invite you to be part of that as well. Compline is this evening. Uh, Compline is that wonderful service of calm prayer uh, to close the weekend and close the day, and we have that on the first and third Sundays of the month, and that's going to be live this evening at 8 p.m. Uh, invite you to be part of that as well. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the whole word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
it is truly right always and everywhere to praise you, Lord God, lover of all. Your wind swept the waters when our world began, and you spoke the word that was yours from all eternity, through whom all things came to be, and whose life lightens every life with the light that the darkness cannot overcome. And when sin's deadly shadow fell everywhere, your word became human flesh in Jesus. He lived among us, yet the world he made did not recognize him. Yet he fulfilled your purpose and loved us to the end. On the cross, he handed over the spirit of life, flowing forever like water from a living spring. Now all who receive him have power to become children of God, born from above through water and your spirit, bearing witness to the truth of your word. All who believe in him have left death for new life. In Jesus, your word becomes flesh of our flesh and blood of our blood, one of us, revealing that no one and no life is distant from you. You restore the harmony of the world we have broken, and you crown your creation with hope for new life. For in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, we offer you these gifts given from your own creation. We offer them gladly as Jesus told us, giving thanks for his death, resurrection, and ascension, and having seen the glory of the Son himself coming forth from you, full of unending love, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Now, as he promised, send your loving spirit to make this bread and this cup the life-giving body and blood of your Son, and to make us perfectly one as you and he are one. For now the darkness of this world is overthrown, and we, your children, have been illumined by your marvelous light. By your light we behold your glory in all the world, and our hearts are open to build your kingdom as we welcome all people to your heavenly banquet of love. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For those who cannot receive our Lord physically in the sacrament this morning, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you, you hold, hold both earth and heaven in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our rages and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Seek truth boldly, then go work for justice, freedom, and peace. Thanks be to God.